Welcome back to The Painting Coach and this week we're doing something a little bit special. I'm going to show you how to paint the Praetorian himself, Rogel Dorn. I'm going to use a lot of different tips, tools and techniques on this one and you may find it a little different to my normal videos. I really hope you enjoy it and learn some new skills. If you do, please let me know down in the comment section where you'll also be able to find timestamps for some of the specific parts. Thanks for watching, let's get started. Okay, let's get this thing primed. Now I'm gonna do things a little differently for this video. For all the items I'm using, all the colors, check the description. And of course, come back and pause the video if you need to. So first up, we're gonna prime almost everything with red brown primer from Vallejo through the airbrush. Next up, I'm gonna prime the head as well as the cloak with Vallejo black primer. And this is just because we're gonna be doing these in a slightly different way to all the other items. Next up, I'm going to take some white ink and I'm going to use this to zenithal highlight some of the items. So we're going to go over all of the base. We're going to pop some highlights on the chain sword and we're also going to put the highlights on the cloak as well. And it's this undershading which is going to make it really easy to get a great red effect later. Now before we throw the colours on, I just want to make sure everything's protected. So I'm just going to airbrush everything with some gloss varnish. To paint the teeth of terror chain saw down the cloak and take advantage of that undershading just going to take some blood angels red contrast paint and i put this through the airbrush now it's really important to put a really thin layer down first before you then come in and gradually add more to build up the intensity and get that really nice red effect okay so we want to get the gold down first now the colour I'm going to use for this is Necro Gold from Scale 75. Really, really love this colour. So first up, in order to get it to go through the airbrush, it's a little thick. So I'm just going to pop it in a pot and use some uh, airbrush thinner and some glaze medium just to make sure that it doesn't go uh, too awry. And I'm going to use this in short bursts just to spray all of the model. Now I've put some protective putty down over the white base so I don't cover that as well. So we're going to cover all the gold with the Necro Gold. Once you're happy with that necro gold, we're going to highlight it with some elven gold again from scale 75, thinning it exactly the same way as we did with the necro gold. And just using this on the raised area, so spraying from above, spraying from 45 degrees through the airbrush. To shade the red a bit, I'm going to take a little bit of sap green ink and just very lightly use this through the airbrush into those shadowed areas. Now it creates a nice contrast and really does help to nicely deepen those shadows. To add a little bit more interest to the gold because it's looking a bit too unified for my liking at the moment, I'm just going to take some transparent burnt umber ink through the airbrush and spray this into the shadowed areas and from below. And the last thing we're going to do with the airbrush for now is just going to take a little bit of red ink. Now I've mixed this with some glaze medium. And I'm just going to gently paint this on the gold where the red cloak will reflect so just gently take your time and add it to it if you want so after all that airbrushing we should have something that looks a little bit like this so what we're going to do now is going to start off with the darker colors so we're going to get some black now i'm using a bad and black and and what we're looking for is all the uh, piping or soft armor areas now i've thinned this down a bit and i'm painting over fairly glossy colors so it's going to need a couple of coats just to go down properly so get that all done don't forget the gun casing as well and then we'll come back and we probably won't need to highlight it but we'll move on to the silver next once you've got all those black areas done we'll, we'll work a little bit on some of the silver parts now so i'm going to use iron hand steel for this um, and we've got things like the the bolter magazine. Don't forget you've also got like the teeth of the chain sword. You've got the, some piping like these here going into the the back and the backpack. So work your way around. There's not a huge amount of silver on here actually. So if you're not sure, check the, uh, I was going to say check the box up, but check the, the Forge World website because obviously they've got all the the colour scheme on there. They've got the 360 views as well. So 
get that done and then we will come back and we'll give it a little bit of a shade next and for shading that we've got a, a nice easy job with some null oil just work it over the, the silver get it into all those recesses and then we'll come back and uh, we'll give it a highlight next if you made any mistakes you can touch it up with some of the gold I'm going to touch that eagle up with some of the elven gold again scale 75 and then we'll uh, we'll have a little look at all the highlighting to highlight the silver you can use chrome from Vallejo Model Air but we're going to use it fairly sparingly because we don't want it to well, it will shine quite brightly but obviously when we do the armor final highlight before we uh, we put an oil wash on it then it's really gonna kind of jump out to us so I'm just using chrome just to highlight some of this metallic where we think the, the light's gonna hit it all so work around all the silver and then we'll come back and uh, I think we'll probably make a start on the, the cloth there so this loincloth is going to be uh, a mix of a kind of cream colour, dark cream colour and, and red like the cloak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Rakarth Flesh and I'm going to paint the whole thing with Rakarth Flesh. Just make sure you don't cover up any detail with it and be careful when you come around these kind of the gold bits there as well. So again it's going to be shiny gloss so you're going to need couple of coats let's just work that on and then we'll come back and then we'll uh, we'll highlight the white bits first before we look to do uh, the red bits next so with that firm base color down what I've done is I've taken a mix of 50 50 Raka flesh and pallid witch flesh and I'm gonna use this to highlight the whole thing now even though some of it's gonna be red the reason I'm highlighting the whole thing is because it's gonna act as underpainting so just identify those kind of raised areas nice and simple with this mix and you can see it's a lot brighter and then when we come back we'll put the last highlight on before we uh, look to add uh, the red color first and the final highlight is just going to be with that pure pallid witch flash so we're just kind of looking for the edges. In terms of how we're going to shade the kind of cream areas in the middle of this, we're going to rely on the oil wash for that. And it's going to do the armor, it's going to do everything, and we're going to, I'll show you how to get a nice easy effect. And it'll also blend everything in as well. So get that done. And we'll come back and we'll add the red outline next. So the red we're going to do the same colour we used on the cloak. And it's going to be a Blood Angels red contrast paint. So just take your time and, and paint it over. And essentially what we're looking to do is go to the line of the, kind of the non-metallic metal just there. So make sure you've got a nice good coverage on there work it all in let it dry and that's that part of the cloth done so we'll do the hilt or the handle rather of the the, the teeth of terror next so for the handle of the teeth of terror I'm just going to take some scream of pink just paint this on again because it's going over the glossy surface you may need uh, two coats to cover it and obviously be careful around any gold bits so Get that done and then we'll we'll shade it and highlight it next. Once that's dry we'll just give a little bit of a shade of null oil just to darken down and just bring back some of the recesses. You know, so I'm not put a lot on, just working it round so it gets into those crevices and then we'll come back and give it a little highlight next. We can then highlight the uh, the handle with some pink horror. And all we're looking to do is just thin lines, on the most raised area, leaving the darker colours in the recesses. So take your time doing that, 
and then we'll come back and we'll jump onto the gems on uh, on Dawn's armour. Dawn has a lot of gems on his armour. He's got some running down his legs and he's got some across his belt. So what we're going to do is we're going to base them all with Korax White. Uh, there's one gem on the sword as well. So don't forget to do that. So this nice and easy, just basing them up. Like I said, we've got these gems on the, the belt as well. Literally gems for days. So get them all done, get them all covered with this Korax white, and then we'll come back, paint the gem next, uh, before we kind of think about the highlight spot we're going to use. So on the box art or on the, the website, there's red and blue gems. You can paint them any colour you want, I suppose. I'm going to use contrast paint to do it. So for the red gems, I'm going to use Blood Angel's red contrast paint. I'm just going to work it onto the, the gem like that. See, it doesn't take uh, much time at all. And the colour I'm going to use for the blue gems, which uh, go around the belt, is going to be Talisar Blue. And again, just in the same uh, style, just painting over the white there, making sure to stay away from the gold. So, nice and easy, get those all done, and I will come back we'll just put a highlight dot on them next. To get that just that shine back. We're going to use some white scar. Make sure you've got a really good tip on the brush. And we're just going to put a little dot on these gems. Kind of following where the light's going to be hitting them. So it's going to be that way there. It's going to be top left. And then it's going to be the top right on these ones. So we are. Nice and easy. I've just remembered I've missed two on there. Never mind. I'll go and fix that next. And then... Uh, there's a lot of dawn done. We're getting to the point where we're not far off. So I think we're going to bite the bullet and tackle the non-metallic metal next. It's probably actually getting a little bit ahead of myself in doing the non-metallic next. What we'll actually do is I'm going to do the highlights on the gold armour. And the colour I'm using for this is Citrine Alchemy. Which is again from that scale 75 uh, gold range. I've got everything else from this. is a really, really bright gold. <clears throat> and what we want to do is we want to look at catching all those sharpest edges and where we can we want to pull it along the kind of the design of the armor because that's going to let us get that nice sharp highlight in terms of what i'm aiming for uh, it's all the kind of sharp raised edges kind of pointing up so obviously there's quite a lot of it uh, to get done and also on the bottom of the Aquila wings as well. So like I said, there is quite a lot to do, so work your way around it all. Use the shape of the model and the side of the brush where you can, like that. And once that's all done, we'll come back and we'll get on to the, uh, the non-metallic gold, uh, followed by the skin, and then we'll do the oil wash on the base. So once we finish with our wildwood, you can see we've got a, it looks almost black on the, the camera. So we want to start to build up this uh, non-metallic gold. Now I'm not uh, an expert on non-metallic metals at all. It's not one of my favourite things to paint, but we're going to do it here because it, it has a place. So we've swapped to some Vallejo paints. I'm using Ochre Brown for this. And essentially I'm going to paint pretty much the entirety of the of the the area, leaving that wildwood in the deepest recesses. Now, don't worry if you haven't got uh, Vallejo paints. You can use Citadel. Uh, and there's a link in the description that's got all of the uh, a link to a color chart so you can make those translations and essentially what I'm looking to do is I'm trying to make the bits that are going to be in light lighter and obviously those bits that are going to be right in the, the depth uh, are going to be darker but I do need to paint the vast majority with this ochre brown so get that done and then we'll come back uh, and start to, to blend up. With that colour down, we want to start highlighting. So the first highlight colour is going to be with gold and yellow, again from Vallejo. And what we're looking to do now is we're just looking to have this over those kind of, if we think about where the light's going to be, it's going to be kind of working its way through there. And there. So we're not painting the whole thing now, we're just sketching in 
where we think those lights are going to be and essentially what we're looking for is where we've got the folds kind of rising up so work your way around and get that done till you're happy with it and then we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll continue to highlight before we kind of have a look if we need to shade it down at all but it's simple steps and it's a real simple non metallic gold and it's coming together a little bit now the next thing I've done is I just want to carry on this highlighting and I've mixed 50-50 Vallejo Ice Yellow with the Golden Yellow and now what I'm looking to do is just make sure I haven't got too much on the brush is I'm really picking up those that kind of path along the folds really focusing in with where I'm putting my highlights and what we're going to do is we're just going to work our way around to build this up and, and as we get to this point things will start to go uh, a little quicker and the reason for that is we're using uh, a lot less paint going over a lot less areas so again what we're looking for is we're looking for where the light is going to hit now if you think how this cloak is going to be on uh, dawn it's going to sit like that so you can see which parts are going to be in light and which parts are going to be in shadow so we'll just work our way around it uh, get that done and then we'll continue the highlighting next the next highlight then is just with pure uh, ice yellow again there is a, a color conversion chart in the uh, in the description but I suppose the ice yellow is the equivalent of, uh, of dawn yellow if you're using citadel and again we're just making the area that we're painting ever so smaller so just work your way around and get that done we've probably got one more highlight and then we'll come and we'll have a little look and see if we want to just change the tone a little bit and the last highlight I'm going to do is just with some ivory again from uh, Vallejo Game Colour we're just gonna just dot this along those kind of sharpest edges and blend it into the, the middle there if you make any mistakes, I mean I made a couple, then you can just go back with the colour you put previously uh, just to fix them. So I'll get that done and then uh, I'm probably just going to refine a few parts of this uh, off cam. Anywhere we've gone outside the lines you can just paint over with uh, Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint. And then uh, we'll have a little look at how we can potentially just, this is very yellow. It's a very yellow gold, so maybe do we want to make it a little bit warmer or a little bit potentially colder? Uh, I'm not 100%, so we'll have a look at it once I've finished refining and then we'll come back. So I really like how this model's come out in terms of the non-metallic gold. Like I said, it's not world champion level non-metallic gold. But what I want to do, I just want to kind of add some kind of a, an orange yellow to the, towards those shadows. And the colour I'm using for this is a Yandon Yellow Contrast Paint. And I just want to push it down into those kind of recesses because it just takes a little bit of that, a uh, little bit of the whiteness away from it. The other thing I can do as well is if, so here for example, I've kind of gone into the gap. So I'm going to, once it's all dry, I can fill that up with uh, the Wildwood just to get the, the differentiation of back. But you know what I mean? For, for a really quick... Uh, and dirty non-metallic gold really happy with that so let's do Dawn's face next okay on to Dawn's face and we're sticking with Vallejo and the colour we're using is mahogany brown now this part is going to be based on something similar to what uh, Jose Da Vinci Jose David does He's a Spanish painter phenomenally talented uh, so essentially we're going over a black base and what I want to do is just paint everything with this mahogany brown apart from the eye sockets and, and everything that's in the deepest kind of shadows so a nice easy step to get started with get that done and then we'll come back and we'll start to build up the highlight on uh, Dawn's face so once that's dry we're going to go back in and this is a 50 50 mix of that mahogany brown and uh, German orange again all Vallejo and this is a fairly wide ranging highlight so pretty much going to highlight everything or paint everything with with this mix and it's kind of got a more kind of pinky look to it so just work it round 
And the only things really we're, we're not going to paint are, are the kind of the the darkest, darkest shadow. So as it dries, you'll start to see what we're looking for. So get that all done. And then when we come back, we'll uh, we'll carry on with the highlighting. So this next highlight, we're going to start to get a little more extreme with some of the the highlights. This is about fifty-fifty mix of uh, German orange and, and ice yellow, and this is now where we're looking to just catch uh, and paint those really raised areas so we're looking you know things like the cheekbone running down there and then we start to kind of establish the facial expression a little bit the brows the creases now this color is a lot brighter than anything we would have used before and that's okay because what we're going to do is we're going to glaze it down a little bit in the next step just to tie it all in uh, nicely so carry on with that get it to where you're happy with it and you can really start to see the, the the nice the colors popping out now so it's probably a more realistic skin tone than if you just used the uh, the citadel paints which you know if that's what you've got and that's what you want to use then feel free to do that there's no obligation at all to to use these i just thought with dawn being a centerpiece model we'd we do a little bit more than the usual base wash highlight so work your way around get that done until you're happy uh, and then we'll have a look and, and, and glaze it a, a little bit next so that we've not got such extreme jumps so to make uh, a little glaze what i'm going to do is just take just take a little bit of the that mix uh, there's some water in that brush anyway so this is very thin there so what i'll do is just where, where it's really thin, just fill my brush up, wipe it on a paper towel, and then I'm just going to glaze up to the to the area where I think that I want it. And it's really important that you haven't got too much on your brush at the moment, and that'll just glaze over those areas. And the more you do, the the tighter those blends will become. So do that, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll carry on highlighting. Next up, I've added more ice yellow into this mix. So this is probably two parts ice yellow to one part German orange. And again, we're just focusing now on those real extreme points of light that we're going to get. So we're looking at the cheekbones, the brow, making sure we're as tight as we can be in terms of how we paint this on. So there we are, work it round, make sure you're happy and you're comfortable. And then we'll come back and I think we'll probably do a little bit of shading next. And then we'll start to tie it all together before we do the hair. Dawn's face is looking pretty good and it's going to be, the white hair is really going to set it off. So what I've got here is I've got a mix of, it's dark sea blue and you can see it's very thin, a lot of water in there. So I'm made into a little bit of a glaze and I'm going to make sure that I take most of that paint off my brush. We're just going to use this a little bit on some of the cheeks just to tint the colour a little bit in, into some of those kind of deep recesses that we've got. Just to, like I said, tint that colour to a more human colour because obviously with the blood flowing through there I know technically Space Marines are not human, but again, I'm using this just very sparingly. Uh, it's up to you how much you want to use, but I think I'm happy with that there. A little bit towards the hair. So there we go. So that's the, the flesh done. Let's get on to the hair next. So I'm going to base the hair with uh, some Corax white. Now I know it's going over black, so it might take uh, a coat or two, but I'm okay with that. Just be careful of the, the skin you've already finished. 
And like I said, it's with the white hair, it's really going to set Dawn's uh, face off. So make sure you get into all those recesses there. If you need to put another coat on, make sure you do it. And we'll come back and we'll uh, throw a little shade in there next. So to tone that hair down a little bit, or at least add a little bit of uh, definition, just give you some basilicanum grey. And I'm working it around, but I don't want it to settle or pool too much. So I'm really just spreading it out as best I can. So get that done. And then we can look to add some highlights to it next. So we've got a nice kind of grey colour to the hair there. I want to build that back up. So I'm going to go back to this Corax White, which is separated a little bit of my palette. But on the side of the head, we just want to dot in some of this Corax White and just build up those dots around it. So you're kind of building up some texture on the hair. And then when it comes to the... the rest of the hair that's been very fashionably styled forward it has to be said uh, you can just catch the raised edges and the shape of the of the sculpt for that so just work your way around all the hair doing that don't forget the eyebrows as well so one of the benefit of these Primark models they come with eyebrows and like other similar scale or uh, models from the range and that'll be the hair done so really all we've got left to do is the base put them all together uh, and then obviously we've got that oil wash which we're going to put across all the armor and across the base as well so get that done and we'll uh, we'll come back and, and do that so here's the base now i've mounted it on a, a painting handle just to make it easier to see so the first thing i want to do is take some basilicanum gray and paint this over all the um, loose looking material that we've got so there's quite a bit of it but you can clearly differentiate it between the uh, the steps that are still in one piece so we want to get that worked all the way around now the other thing i want to do is i want to paint everything else with this basilicanum gray as well and the reason for that is because i need a rougher surface to paint other elements on now not so I don't want to paint the steps, I want to leave them white, but these areas here, which are going to be black, the rim of the base, etc., this dead space marine, who's going to be an iron warrior, uh, you'll be pleased to know. So get that done, because that will just, when it dries, it'll just give me a, a better surface to get some purchase on. And then once it's dry, um, we, we're pretty much ready for the oil wash and the oil colours. Paint your Space Marine or your Dead Space Marine however you want uh, to match your particular army. And then uh, we'll come back and ha have a look at uh, how that's worked out. So it's time for the oil wash. So I'm going to make this oil wash here using some uh, burnt umber oil and some white spirit. So what I'm going to do is I pop that in there I'm just going to mix that in into a kind of a wash consistency and that's a little thin so i just want to keep working it until i get the color i want so what i'm going to do is just work that around there now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pop this over the base so when it comes to the base this is going to go pretty much over all the white all the the grey that uh, we've done. Now I'm going to avoid uh, or try to avoid some things, uh, sort of these areas here which I'm going to paint black. And the reason I'm avoiding them now is because this oil isn't going to have dried in time for me to actually put the video together in the final shot. So I want to avoid those areas which I'm going to be working on again, like that Space Marine. So just work this all the way round and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to uh, clear it all up so that we get some some nice effects on the base and this goes for all the stonework as well so there's some other compatible bits don't worry about the bits on Dawn we'll do him when we do Dawn's armor so what I'm going to do while that's still wet is I'm just going to take a makeup sponge and I'm going to use that to wipe off 
the excess oil and you can see that it's going to sit in those deep shadows which is great and adds some nice a nice brown effect but you can clear off these tiles you can see how much oil's come off there clear off the tiles a bit just to get that kind of white i guess marble effect back the other thing i'm going to do as well just white brown where i've overspilt into areas that i know i'm going to need to paint on uh, before long so nice and easy nice and straightforward with an oil wash so if you get that done and then we'll go on to dawn next as for dawn we're going to use the same wash so it's fairly thin but i'm using a brush with a lot more control and you can see as i start to put it on to the model it's really starting to run into those recesses and really enhance the work that we've already done so i'm gonna finish doing this off camera and we'll come back so i show you how we get the model back to its kind of uh pre-oil effect and i'm also going to pop it into these areas here on the loincloth because actually it's really effective for um for getting a nice gradiated shade as well so i'm working around dawn getting this oil into all those recesses and then we'll come back and i'll show you how to to get out most of it and leave with a really really nice looking armor you can see with that oil wash on there the gold looks really nice so what we're going to do is going to take like a, a cotton bud or a, a q-tip depending on what part of the world you live and we're just gonna work over the top capturing where that's that oil is highest you see there working down through there it gives you a nice nice shade take it away from all the, the big areas leaving it in the back there this is looking really really good really happy with how the the oil wash has tempered the gold which was really bright and shiny and now with that oil wash looks really nice and burnished i'm really happy with how this has come out so just going to work our way around get that off uh, i'm probably going to stick dawn together um, and might do a little bit more with oils just on the uh, on on the stonework itself uh, and of course i'll show you how to do that uh, we'll have a look at that next i wanted to show how if you needed to you can blend some white back into that while it's still wet so what i'm doing i've just got some white oil paint i'm just gonna dot it along here and along the edges like that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the, the bigger brush i'm just going to brush that forward like that and you can see it's brightening that up it's also following where i've popped that down it's just a nice way of just adding a little bit back in here because i think i've probably been a bit uh overzealous with some of the spraying that i've done which has left uh, this a slightly different color to the other side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put everything together uh, i'm going to get dawn sorted for the uh, for the turntable and we will have a look at him there next and uh, see how this effect has all been pulled off so there we have it rogel dawn is done and he's ready for display or the tabletop I really hope you've enjoyed this video a little bit different in terms of how I've done things, the materials I've used, but hopefully it's given you some inspiration to either paint your own Rogel Dawn or your own Gold Armoured Warriors. If you would like to support me, you can do so using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me via my Discord, a live monthly frequently asked question show on YouTube as well as some exclusive offers and the odd occasional giveaway. There's also the link for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% of all your Wargaming needs, not just Warhammer. And also my Amazon links where you can find some of my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.